x minus 1 times x plus 3 is 15. Then looking at what? Did I erase? Who erased? Me. Then according to what I did on the board, um, I've got 2x minus 1 equal to 15 or x plus 3 equals to 15. Do you all agree? Does this make sense to you? Yes, Shashang, you're nodding your head, correct? Right or not? Is this correct? What's wrong? I thought we were doing that on the board just now, all our um, A times B equals to 0. So A equals to 0 or B equals to 0, Mark? Mm, yes, John? 15 has multiple factors. What are some of them? 3 and 5, what else? 1 and 15. So are you suggesting that uh, my answer should be 2x minus 1 equal to 15 or, uh, okay, let's change this to an n. Uh, x plus 3 equals to 1. Should this be the answer? And then we have other options. Uh, 2x minus 1 equals to 1 and x plus 3 equals to 15 or 2x minus 1 equals to 3 and x plus 3 equals to 5 or so on and so forth. Does this, does this look right? doesn't look right, huh? Because we have the same x over here. Okay? If you were to solve all these, your x values may not be the same. Therefore, we cannot approach this question like this. In fact, uh, like John mentioned, we've got 3 and 5, 1 and 15. We can have other numbers multiplied together to give us 15. For example, 7.5 and 2. Right? There are so many options to choose from. How are we going to try and error everything and make sure that all the x values are the same? Therefore, we are going to use this property, a times b equal to 0, implying that a equals to 0 or b equal to 0. We're going to use this property to have us solve it. Okay? But right now, do I have two expressions multiplied together to give me 0? Do I have the question in a form a times b equal to 0? Yes or no? Quite clearly, no. Ah, because I've got something times something equal to 15. So now, I am going to try and make it into the form a times b equal to 0 by expanding this. Okay, step 1, expand. Step 2, you may want to copy this down. Make right hand side equal to 0. Step 3, factorize left hand side so by following these three steps you will end up with a times b equals to zero then a will be equal to zero or b equal to zero okay start with our step one step one expand okay so 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 3 equals to 15. Step 2. Make the right hand side be equal to 0. Right now my right hand side has a 15. So I need to subtract 15 on both sides so that it's equal to 0. I'm left with 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 minus 15 is minus 18 equals to 0. Next step 3 is to factorize. So 2x squared plus 5x minus, minus 18 we have uh, x and 2x. Here we have 9 and negative 2. 2x squared minus 18. 9x minus 4x. So we get 5x. Okay, so it is factorized to become x minus 2. x plus 9 equals to 0. Now, from here, I will use this property, which tells me that x plus minus 2 equals to 0 or x plus 9 equals to 0 therefore x equals to 2 or x equals to negative 9 yeah? oh 2x plus 9 thank you 2x plus 9 so minus 9 over 2 ok let's see what other questions we had as homework huh? ok this one Solve the following equations. Again, same type. 
do I have right hand side equal to zero? Don't have. So I need to make right hand side equal to zero by, let's start with our step one. Step one is to expand. 5x minus x squared equals to negative 36. But I skip a step, I combine step one and two together huh? because I know I need to make right hand side be equal to zero. I need to add 36 to both sides. So plus 36 equals to zero. So now we factorize. You will get x minus 9, x x minus 9. Okay, give me a moment. Huh? Okay, so from here, we get uh, x squared minus 5x minus 36 equals to 0. John, help me factorize. Okay. Now, if you try to factorize from from here, which is negative x squared plus five x plus thirty six equals to zero, you will end up with factorize using this. Then your factorized form is negative x plus nine x plus four equals to zero which will still result in the same answer. Both of these will give us x equals to negative 4 or 9. Okay, same. Okay? Uh, I believe there is one last question. Oh no, there are more. Since the steps are the same, I'm just going to give you the final answer. You just do a check. Tell me whether you need me to help you. So part C, we've got x equals to negative 3 or 1. Show of hands, somebody got this correct. Okay, thank you. Next part. 10x squared minus x minus 3. So this is just factorized. We get 3 over 5 or negative half. Part B, we have x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals to 0. Therefore, x is equals to 3 or 3. Do we need to write both? No need lah. Write one time can already. So x equals to 3 or? Okay, well, practice two. After you x, yes? Can x? Which one? A or B? Okay. Are you able to factorize this? What do you factorize to give, uh, what do you factorize then to be? 2x minus 1. 2x minus 1 and? And 5x plus 2, is it? Plus what, can x? Can x? Tell me your work. Stop looking at his work. What do you write? No, 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 never mind. You tell me what you wrote. Oh, you know why you are wrong already. So don't let me go through. Then what about part B? What about part B? Do you know where you went wrong? Okay, tell me your first step. X squared minus 5. Minus 6x. Plus 14 equals 0. Okay, so she combined step 1 and step 2 together already. She made the right hand side be equal to 0. But uh, this negative 5 and 14, we can combine them to become plus 9. <coughs> so minus 6x plus 9 equals to 0. Then we have to factorize now. Okay, can x? Factorizing, we get x and x, 3 and 3. x squared, 9. 
3x, 3x, just nice, they give us 6x, but we want negative 6x. So we give these two a negative signs, which means I must give the two trees a negative sign as well. Okay? Then negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So they are factorized to become x minus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, next one. Part A. Our two answers are negative 3 and 4 over 3. Anybody need help for this? Still the same working, huh? But it's just the practice that we need you to have. So here we have um, x plus 4, x minus 4. So x is equal to negative 4 or 4. Okay, the step before this will be x squared minus 16 equals to 0. I hope you remember that this is rewritten as x squared minus 4 squared equals to 0. So x plus 4, x minus 4. Okay, so answer over here we have negative one third and five over two. For the last one we have five over two or five. Okay, anybody needs help with these two? So these are all your foundation type of question. Then we're gonna be dealing with problem sums. Yes, Iman, do you need help? Which one? B. This one? Right? Okay, let's try this, huh? 2x minus 5. You just need an answer. Yeah, um, 5 over 2 and 5 law? Didn't I write that? Okay, 5 over 2 or 5. Great. Okay. Anybody needs help? Yes. B. So this question. Okay, can. A also. Okay, let's go through these two questions. Okay, part A. Uh, remember our step one was to expand, right? But in this case, is there anything to expand? At the moment, there isn't anything to expand, but our unknown is in a denominator. It is on the other side in the numerator. So give me a suggestion on what we can do for this. Cross multiply. Okay, so take a pencil. Let's multiply this way. So step one, we multiply so that we get rid of the fractions. Eight, okay. X plus two, X minus five equals to eight. Right, this is our first step. Then, doesn't this have the same format as uh, the previous few questions already? Where I told you step 1, expand. Step 2, make right hand side 0. Step 3, factorize. We're going to apply the same few steps. So step 1, expand. x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 10 equals to 8. Step 2, right hand side must be 0. So x squared minus 3x Minus 18 equals to 0. Okay. Okay, so I see 18. I think of the factors of 18 will be 6 and 3. It is possible to get a 3 from 6 and 3. Okay, 6 minus 3. So let's see what happens if I factorize x. x to give me x squared. On this side, I require negative 18, I require negative 3x over here. So 6 and 3, 3x, 6x, for a negative sign over here, for a negative here, so I get negative 3x. Okay, so now they are factorized to become x minus 6, x plus 3 equals to 0. Therefore, x equals to negative 3 or 6. Did I give a different answer just now? So I was wrong. So this step, 
three. Very good. Now for part B, let's see if there's any other if there were any other mistakes made. This one is correct. But different people have different ways of doing it, no? How many uh do you think we should expand? Should we expand? So we expand become four x square uh, minus twenty x plus twenty five equals to ten x minus twenty five. Then continue, is it? There is actually an easier way. Do you see anything in common on your left hand side and right hand side? Is there anything common? 2x minus 5 is a common factor, right? Okay, let's bring this over. So we have 2x minus 5 squared minus 5 times of 2x minus 5 equals to 0. So remember, our step 2 was to make right hand side equal to 0, but I did it over here first. Okay, so instead of expanding everything, how about if I try to factorize? Because factorizing this looks rather simple. 2x minus 5 is a common factor. So on the left hand side, for this portion, we are left with 2x minus 5. Then on this side, we are left with minus 5 equals to 0. Any issues so far? Okay, then 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5 minus 5 is 2x minus 10 equals to 0. So in this way, it is factorized quite easily without doing the expansion and factorizing. Therefore, x equals to 5 over 2 or 5. So if you prefer this method over what I assume you have, which is to expand everything and then to factorize, please copy this down. The sum of two, the squares of two consecutive positive odd numbers is 394. Find the numbers. When you are told to find the numbers like this, find an unknown. So we let one number b what should we let one number b x of course so the other number must be number is x plus 2 why because it's consecutive positive odd numbers you think about it consecutive positive odd numbers for example 1 and 3 if I have this as x, this must be x plus 2. If I have 1, 0, 5, then the next number is 1, 0, 7. If this is x, this must be x plus 2 also. Okay. So if one number is x, the other must be x plus 2. So now we have to form the equation ourselves. The sum of the squares of the two numbers. So x squared plus x plus 2 squared. So this is what they are telling you. The sum of the squares of two consecutive positive odd numbers is 394. From here, everything is the same already. Expand, right hand side 0, factorize. x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 394 equals to 0. x squared, 2x squared, plus 4x minus 390 equals to 0. Then we divide by 2 everywhere. We get x squared plus 2x minus 195 equals to 0. And we factorize x minus 13 x plus 15 equals to 0. So x equals to 13 or negative 15. You thought they say positive, right? So can both answers be accepted? Cannot. Which one must reject? Negative 15. So we reject over here. Marks will be deducted if you do not reject. Okay? Because if you don't reject, it tells us that hey, you are accepting everything. But the question says it must be positive. So x is equal to 13. Then what is the other number? See, I've got one number is 13 already. What must the other number be? Okay, so the other number is 15. 
Therefore, answer is 13 and 15. Okay, just 13 plus 2, you get 15. Next, question nine, uh, page 9. I want you to try this question now. Okay, now, how will we, how should we start this question? How should we start this? Let, okay, let. Let what? Do you understand what dimensions mean? Uh, length and breadth, huh? Uh, if possible, height, but in this case, no height to talk about. So let what be x? Okay, let breadth be x. Be x meters. Okay, so the other thing that we need to find out will be our length. So, length equals to <coughs> what will it be? There will be two possible options you can have. 216 over x. Right? Using the area because it's rectangular. However, some people may choose to start off with. So, length equals to, similar to what Reyes did, what do we have? 60 minus 2x divided by 2. Using the parameter. Both of them are okay. Alright, so the next step, let's go back to the one in red. Since the length is 216 over x, then let us uh, use this, sorry, not, not this one, let us use this perimeter. Okay, having an expression for breadth and length, I can add them up, multiply by 2 to get a perimeter. So, 2x plus 2 times of 216 over x must be equal to 60. This is if you choose um, the working in red. So this gives me 2x plus 5, sorry, 4, 3, 2 over x equals to 60. Then how to continue from here? I see a fraction, but I don't like that fraction. What can we do? What can I do to get rid of the denominator? Divide by? Multiply by x. Okay, let's choose to multiply by x everywhere. Okay, so on the left hand side, I will get 2x squared plus 432x equals to, uh, no, no more x over here, equals to 60x. So now the question becomes the same type as all that we have done already. I'm going to minus 60x on both sides so that the right-hand side is equal to 0. At the same time, I am going to divide by 2. Okay? So I have x squared minus 30x plus 216 equals to 0. So this is where I'll cheat a little. Factorized form is x minus 18 x minus 12 equals to 0. So x equals to 12 or 18. So my x is the breadth. Then the length. So I'm going to reject this. Length is equal to 216 divided by x. 216 over 12 to give me 18. Okay, so now I have the dimensions already. If you were to do the working in blue, you will still arrive at the same answers. 